Hello and welcome to Blockchain Global News. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. With me today, Timo Lejasa, the co-founder and chief investment officer of Swarm. So welcome. Thank you. Very interested in hearing about Swarm. So this is blockchain for private equity. Yeah. So kind of explain what it is you're doing. Yeah, so we were looking at the market and we saw that a lot of the uh, private capital assets, such as private, e private equity fund positions, hedge fund positions, as well as, you know, properties, were high value assets that were yielding very good returns mm -hmm. and they are generally inaccessible to most investors. So typically the way those deals are structured is they bring in institutional investors that can in invest several million dollars and put the money away for several years and that's kind of how that market is structured today. So we saw an opportunity in opening that up by uh, creating a blockchain solution that would tokenize um, positions into those funds to make them more accessible for uh, smaller investors, investors, but then also to make them more um, liquid and tradable um, over the long term. Okay, that yeah. sounds like a good solution. So um, the name Swarm, I guess, does that mean because it's attracting a lot of different people? How, how, did, how did you get the name? Yeah, so it comes from, you know, the concept of having a, a governance model, which is based on a decentralized um, voting and decision-making mechanism, uh, which means that there's multiple people that need to make a decision around, if in this case, a particular high-value asset together. So how do you do that when, let's say, you have 100 people that own an asset, a high-value asset together and they don't know each other so they basically need to get together to make a decision around you know what to do with the assets and so the whole swarm concept kind of comes out of that and when you talk about smaller investors uh, does that mean anybody I mean is there a minimum so? not not really I mean in today's regulatory environment there are still you know limitations in terms of who can do what so uh, predominantly we're talking about in the from a US point of view it's accredited investors um, in other regions around the world it's called uh, sophisticated investors or professional investors so these are people that have, you know, relatively good income and have some uh, wealth already. Okay. And we're working on solutions that would actually open that up even further down the path of retail investors. But it takes, we're, we're actually doing that in steps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. And you have a security token, the SRC20. Yeah. So tell me about that and how does that fit into your whole business model? Yeah. So we looked at, you know, what do we need to do if we're going to tokenize each of these high value assets? Then we said, so each of the assets are going to be represented by an individual token. So if there's a real estate fund that has its own token, and there's another, let's say, a crypto hedge fund, for example, that has its own token as well. So if these two tokens are going to be accessible across multiple different platforms, and then uh, subsequently also be uh, liquid and tradable at various exchanges, then there needs to be in, like, a standard or an interoperability solution for that. So we put that together and called it SRC20, uh, just to kind of demonstrate how we think about creating interoperability and standardization for security tokens. And that's kind of the protocol that you're explaining. So, I mean, so how does that work for somebody? Like, say that I'm an investor that wants to get involved in that. Walk me through the steps. How do I begin the process? Yeah, so the first thing you have to do is uh, to do, and basically to view or be active in any of these investments. You have to provide your full KYC information, which includes, you know, identity, proof of address, and, and things like that. Okay. And then subsequently also, depending on which jurisdiction you live in, then you have to to provide, you know, for the U.S. Uh, persons, for example, it's an accredited verification that is that we're doing as well. And then once you've gone through that um, verification process, th only then can you deploy capital into some of these investments. Okay. And what kind of investments are? I mean, there's a lot of different. It's very diverse. Yeah. So we we thought about this as a horizontal market infrastructure. So we didn't want to dictate at all, like what kind of investments that should actually be available. We just said, you know, we want to start with professionally managed funds because we think that makes sense from a scalability point of view, but also from a curation point of view. So it's easy to look at a manager's track record and say, we think these people know what they're doing, and therefore they should be presented to the investor community as something that they could consider investing in. And so the way we run that is it goes through a community vote. So basically the swarm votes for things that they want to see on the platform. Interesting. So as a result, we're not directing you know, the investment opportunities in this or that direction. It's actually things that come in and get voted for. Uh, and this is real estate, renewables, agriculture, yeah. tech, crypto hedge funds. I mean, this is a ton of different... Yeah, so so far we've yeah. seen a couple of different categories, you know, all the way from, uh, let's say, a very simple, straightforward fixed income, dollar-denominated fund, uh, all the way through to impact funds. Um, so we have, you know, a couple of funds in the impact space. One is doing redevelopment of property in Puerto Rico. Another one is doing micro-lending for farmers in Africa. Hmm. So we have a very wide array of, of investment opportunities on the platform today. And we think that's, I think that's generally good 
uh, because we're building market infrastructure. Sure. We're not building an asset management firm. Yeah. Um, and, an, and an opportunity for people to invest in things that I don't know if they could. I mean, otherwise, farming in Africa, you know, that's kind of yeah. unique. And I think that, that, that's maybe very niche, but where we see a lot of demand is, let's say, so we have a registered investors from 60 countries on Swarm, uh, so it's about 30,000 registered investors today. And the interesting thing is when you look at some of the dynamics between, let's say, some countries in Asia that have high inflation currencies, for example, you know, for them to be able to invest in a US dollar denominated asset, which is a kind of a prime asset, uh, yielding strong returns, uh, it's a huge thing. So, and, and, and you know, that wouldn't have been accessible unless we had built what we built, so. Okay, so finally, how can someone find out more about Swarm? A website, social media? Yeah, we're all over those channels. Okay. We're basically everywhere. So it's uh, swarm.fund, obviously. If you want to look at the investment opportunities, it's invest.swarm.fund. Okay. And, and that's kind of a, a good starting point. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Timo, for coming and explaining Swarm. Sounds like some really interesting thank you, op investment opportunities there. And thank you as well for joining us on Blockchain Global News. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ. Have a great day.